Good morning, everybody. Um, our team is composed by Juan Carlos Rodriguez, Jaime Franco, and Ricardo Gonzalo, and we're talking today about a Panther SVR. That's what we call it. It's a surveillance robot. All right. First of all, why a surveillance robot? A uh, surveillance robot will help uh, to protect humans, uh, to protect facilities, and to keep our valuables safe. Um, uh, it is actually the same job that a uh, security guard do, but uh, in incredibly safer because you don't have a human risking their lives uh, for for saving valuables or maintaining a security in a in a specific place. Uh, a security robot will have a camera, can uh, follow or hide from intruders, um, whatever is actually the need that you have. Um, right now. There are several uh, actual robots that actually works as a security, a security robot. For example, uh, this one right here is for a military operation robot. Uh, it includes a camera, it includes a control remote, and it has tracks to go into hard places. Um, this one right here is the cheaper one, it's about $300, and um, it actually has a camera, have a Wi-Fi connection, so you can see what the robot is actually seeing online. And la the last one, the Jessica robot, which is this one right here, is actually the most advanced one in, in civil protection. Um, it actually has a camera, also have the Wi-Fi connections. It's actually pretty, pretty quick. Uh, it, the, respond, the response is pretty quick too. All right, our concepts. We have two different concepts at the beginning. Uh, one of them is a 100% autonomous platform, where the robot adds things for himself and perform the tasks that he wanted to do, and the other one was the 100% remote control platform when you control the robot with a remote controller and a receiver. Uh, our final concept was like integrating both of them. It's going to be a robot that is going to be autonomous in a way. He, he, will, uh, he will avoid obstacles and try to find the object, and at the end we will have a camera that we will control with a remote controller in order to obtain the image that we want to see. As a timeline, uh, as as it is explained, as it is explained right here, uh, it took the, the part that took us the most was the programming process, about two or three weeks, and at the end we were in time to finish the the project. Okay, so the major components, uh, since we used the the P basic uh, stamp and the uh, Bobot in class, we got very familiar with it, so we decided to go with uh, this uh, robot. Uh, for, our, for our major component, for our major platform. Um, we used also two servos, high-tech uh, Metal Gear servos, for, uh, to control the camera, and a uh, motion sensor, which uh, has a range supposedly of, of 20 feet, but we found out that it's really like five or, or four feet in range. Uh, we also used two infrared sensors, and uh, the, the two infrared sensors are um, to, they, they're designed to uh, measure distances, but the way that we're using them is it's to uh, recognize the distance between the object that is moving and the uh, BOPA. Next slide. Uh, the Helicam is it's the camera that we're using to uh, uh, recognize whatever is moving, and we're controlling it with a uh, DX6I. Uh, spectrum transmitter and the receiver which we had from a previously uh, design project, the cost analysis. Uh, the Bobot cost uh, $196, the camera $40. This is uh, like pretty much all the major components that we use and it came up to a total of $536 with shipping included. All right, uh, these are the two pictures that we have right now showing what we came up with. Uh, this is the Bobot, and we did a two degree of freedom uh, arm where the camera is mounted on top and it has its own battery and the two uh, servos has another battery mounted at the bottom too. Next slide. And this is the program logic that the Bobot or the Panther SBR uh, robot does. What it does is it goes forward, <coughs> it does a three days for a certain amount of distance, for a certain distance. It does a 360 degree scan. If motion is detected during the, that 360 degree scan, the bubble will go towards the object that is moving and stop in front of it. 
and then we can maneuver with the camera and see what's going on. If no motion is detected while it's scanning, it will keep going forward and then again stop and do another 360 degree rotation until it, it detects some type of motion. Here's a flow chart explaining more or less the same concept. It goes forward if the obstacle is detected, it avoids it and it returns. If the obstacle then it does a 360 degree rotation, if motion is detected, it follows and it stops uh, near the object. And then with the camera we can control it and then again comes back to the to your to your action. And here is a video showing our Panther SBR. There it starts going forward, it pops it to the detector, it avoids it. Now if no object is going to be detected, then it's going to start scanning. If no object is detected moving, then it keeps going. And if object is detected, it should go towards it. But we have some type of problem with the motion sensor that sometimes it detects motion, sometimes it doesn't. And it also depends on how far and how close you put that object uh, that is moving towards the robot. So now that we're placing that object, it's supposed to be in capture now. And here on the TV, you can see that what the camera is showing. Right there, it detected the object, and it's going towards it as it moves. If the object goes too far out of range, the bubble stops because it does, the infrared sensor doesn't have that big of a range, so you need you will need to bring the object closer in order to bubble to keep following it. And once it's uh, closer, certain uh, due to uh, within a certain distance, it stops, and it doesn't let it, it doesn't get too close to the object. It always keeps a certain amount of distance between the robot and the, and the object. It never touches the object in motion. We're trying with a different object, and it should be, it should start going towards it. There you go. And here, we're controlling the camera also. With the image controlling the camera with the remote control. So that was our uh, demonstration. Now for future improvements, like uh, like we said, uh, we should like to use better sensors for better range so we can uh, detect objects farther away from the distance that we uh, tested. Also we would, we would like the idea of having four resistors to avoid that dark areas so the bubble always goes through uh, lighter areas, it doesn't get any Anytime uh, under a table or or places where rooms are dark, where visibility is uh, pretty much uh, no nothing. Uh, also, using tracks instead of wheels will give you the, will give us the possibility of uh, putting the robot in different terrains. Uh, power in terms of power, we realized that when we were, we were testing the uh, the program and the code, uh, we realized that we run out of batteries uh, very fast. So a better power source that which will give us a better, a longer uh, uh, life on the robot will be a good idea. And also a Bluetooth uh, attachment to it will give uh, uh, more versatility to the, to the robot. Uh, this concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you very much.